Hello, my name is Scott McQuaid and I'm Senior Sales Support Engineer for the XVS Switcher lineup with Sony Electronics. Today I want to give you an introduction to the newest XVS Switcher, the XVS G1. One of the newest features of the G1 is the hybrid architecture. It's a next-gen XVS Switcher. Within the processor we have CPU, FPGA, and GPU. There's four stylish new control panels. There's a new menu system, which is computer-based. Uh, we have 12G SDI interface for HD and 4K, one to four MEs, 16 keyers, all with 2.5D resizers, and an internal frame memory that comes standard in the base model. Uh, we're looking to fit this into the market for where our MVS 3000A and our MVS 6530 lived, uh, small to medium-sized productions, house of worship, corporate events, and education, and fly packs. So the first thing we want to take a look at in the new processor is that new hybrid architecture. Hardware for low latency and robust processing, software for versatility and changeability. The CPU area is going to go for system control, user interface and management, uh, communications interfacing. The FPGA uh, gives you the processing for MEs, keyers, I.O. and conversion. And then the GPU area is going to, uh, for a feature, is going to give you video effects processing at a very high level, uh, D, 3D DME, video clip player, and some more keen graphics areas. So it's really a nice, different way to approach the architecture of a processor, and it allows us to do much more power and then be much more versatile in every individual area. And the first versatility will go to the specs. In HD, we're going with 24, 36, or 48 in HD. Frame syncs on all the inputs. Format conversion up to, up to 24 of those inputs. Color correction for 12 of the inputs. Output-wise in HD, 12, 18, or 24 format conversions on 12 of those. And color correction on six aux outputs. 4K inputs 24. All frame syncs on all of them. Format conversion on 12 of those inputs. Color correction on up to six and 12 outputs in 4K with six uh, format converters and up to three color correctors on aux assignments. And we'll stick with the versatility and go just back uh, to our ME boards. So a standard ME board is an ME with eight keyers, all with 2.5D resizers, plus a clip transition key, so kind of a ninth keyer on that board. You can put that board as is one ME with eight keys, or you can use split mode, which makes two MEs and then the keyers can be split between those two MEs, eight to zero, six to two, or four and four. Multiprogram two mode is another way to take the, the board and make it two MEs. You can go two MEs with, or one ME with main and sub transition engines, and then the eight assignable keyers can be put on the main and sub and recalled with snapshots or uh, keyframe effects, just like we can on our bigger XVS switchers. Uh, the other big change on the versatility is the key priorities. Key priorities can be changed freely in all, key, in all keys, even the clip transition key. Um, so this gives us a lot of versatility and allows and takes a step forward from our current XVS lineup. How about the new menu? New menu is new user-friendly design. It's from a touchscreen computer or a mouse and keyboard, or you can create a Wi-Fi setup within the system and put it on a tablet have up to 16 web menus open at the one at one time. There's fewer menu layers than there are in the normal XVS series, but it's an intuitive menu tree. If you're an XVS user right now, you'd be able to uh, migrate over to this without any issues at all. Recommended devices would be Windows 10 PC, iPad Pro 12.9 inch, Surface Pro X, or and Chrome and Safari are both supported browsers. Uh, let's take a look at some of the things here. With touchpad, you're gonna have multiple ways to to change values and interface with the menu. You can have a 10 keypad that you can touch and click on and type in values, or you can use finger gestures, pinches, and grows for that. Or, and on the module setup, you'll be able to call up a graphical interface of what a hard module on the control panel looks like and be able to program buttons in there from the menu system that way with touch and click in that. The other thing the new menu system allows us to do is merge our menu macros and our regular macros into one destination region. So um, you won't have to be making two macros for one uh, issue. Let's talk a bit about the GPU now. The GPU is an option. You highlight the option on the GPU and, and activate it, then you actually have other options you can add one at a time or all four at the same time or 
how you ever want to go. First one's a built-in clip player. We have 3D multi effects, uh, enhanced multi viewer, and a still logo keyer. Internal clip player basically is four channels in HD, two channels in 4K. AVC files, .mov, and MP4 are all supported. Uh, you can easily uh, load those files and import those files from the internal to the internal SSD drive in the GPU from the menu PC or tablet that you're using. So your first interface is that menu. You're going to import them into the GPU menu SSD drive, and then they go to the switcher crosspoint and how you want to use that, that input. Enhanced multi-viewers. I should say that the base model of the XVS G1 does come with two multi-viewer outputs, but this would enhance them on the GPU side, and you could enhance them with audio meters in each window, uh, layer overlays, and internal clock. The still logo here. This is a logo inserter with dedicated still store and keys. Up to four still images can be keyed without consuming frame memory or an ME keyer. Uh, you can, uh, still graphics can be imported and stored in the GPU memory, 80 stills in HD and 20 in 4K. There's four layers or four keyers that would be part of the still logo key. You would assign them to an ME and then they become part of that ME's preview. They're linear keys. They have cut and mix capabilities and they're snapshot and keyframe recallable within the ME they're assigned to. Let's talk about the new control panels. Four new control panels, one row and two row uh, ME panels, 16 cross point buttons or 24 cross point buttons. They're stylish and new. Multiple panels can be hooked up to one processor. They're one piece and compact to fit any style and operational need. Um, let's go and uh, take a quicker internal look. There's a utility shop box area at the top. That can be just like our utility shop box module on the uh, ICPX 7000 series. You can recall snapshots, recall macros, recall shot boxes. Uh, there's also a menu mode on that module that will allow you to interface to the menu and change parameters with, with on from the hard control panel with the knobs on the side of that module. There's a trackball module on top. That's the same exact trackball module that's on the ICPX 7000 series and operates the same way. You can control DMEs, you can control resizers, and you can control dev external device uh, sources. Uh, transition area, basically a compact transition module, but you can still access all eight keyers of an ME and the transition at the same time. Uh, every ME row is gonna have a flexi pad, exact same flexi pad as the ICP X7000 series. You can record macros, edit macros, recall macros, recall shot boxes, store your snapshots per ME and recall snapshots per ME all from that flexi pad. And the cross point area, very similar to the ICP 3000A and ICP 6530 control panels, uh, key bus mode and key uh, delegation mode are both available um, in, in individual rows that way. So if you need more information on the, X, on the XVS G1, please visit our website and thanks for listening.